I am doing pretty well. How are you holding up? I'm doing great. Awesome. I have a lot of family up there uh, in the uh, Seattle and the surrounding areas. So, so uh, uh, I'm, sending, I'm sending love to my family through, through this interview, if that's possible. <laughs> I had no idea. Yes, by all means, say hello to everybody here. Awesome. Hello, everyone in Seattle. <laughs> so I have to assume that you were cast in this role because of your uncanny resemblance to Shaggy. <laughs> That's a compliment because I think Shaggy is incredibly handsome. <laughs> Definitely there was that we, we shared uh, similar scruffiness. Uh, for most of my life, I've, I've, I've uh, you know, had bushy, hair kind of a little more bowl cut than him, but yeah, there are definitely uh, similarities. <laughs> I have to ask, since we are in quarantine, what is your go-to sandwich? Because I feel like we all have one right now. My go-to sandwich. There is so much time to experiment. I've been doing, uh, yesterday was this amazing bread-free sandwich and I've not been, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of carbs. I love it, but my, my fiance took this these long lettuce spears and put some uh, hummus and crushed up almonds and uh, smoked chicken on there. And just, it's Ooh. not very many elements, but it just, it tasted like heaven in a sandwich. I love that. Does the sandwich need to have bread? I mean, I feel like by what you just defined, no. Yeah, no. My sandwich, though, does because I feel like I do double carbs at this point. Give me four pieces of bread with a little bit in between and I'm good. See, that's the thing is, and this is not a carb thing. I just like the taste of meat. I like a little bit of taste of bread with the meat, but I like a meat heavy sandwich. So I'm, I'm usually like trying to double. Like If I go to uh, a sandwich shop, it's always double meat with just one, you know, not stacked bread. Got and it. Sandwich, I'm removing the, the middle pieces of bread. <laughs> okay, I love in this movie that we do, we learn Scoob and Shaggy's origin story. What's your first pet origin story? My first pet origin story? We had a dog named Poochie. And uh, we always had the craziest, I guess Poochie is not a crazy name. That's a normal name. We, at the same time we had a dog named Poochie, we had a cat named Lassie. <laughs> I guess the I guess the Lassie one was the interesting one because Lassie ran away. Lassie was an outdoor cat, um, uh, ran away, and a couple weeks later we saw Lassie on the side of the road had been hit by a car and sadly had died. And so we were crying and and buried the cat, and then a week later Lassie, our Lassie, came back home. So this oh. was random cat, which is still sad. I don't like thinking about that dead cat on the side of the road, but, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's the origin story of our cat Lassie. <laughs> that's quite the, uh, the new plot twist in Lassie Come Home. It's a totally di different ending than what I remember it being. Lassie's a cat now. <laughs> okay, last quick question. I feel like this movie is a great opportunity for us to bring a word from the Scooby-Doo lexicon back into our vernacular. So should we push for drat, zoinks, or jinkies? Oh, man. I, I mean, I have to go with, with zoinks. Uh, I, I, that was, it was such a thrill to get to say that. Um, although jinkies is, that's, I, I actually went, uh, there's a, a little breakfast place that, uh, that I went to that has a really wonderful omelet. It's called Jinkies, so that's just brought up that. But yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Final answer. Okay, zoinks it is. We're bringing it back. You heard it here first. Awesome. Oh. Well, there you Hi, are. Amanda. Who's that? This is Tootsie, and I am introducing <laughs> you guys because she watched the movie with the rest of the family last night quite intently. She was into it. What? <laughs> animated <laughs> too, like an animated movie. I mean, listen, she knows. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it means that she's really bright or really not bright, but she enjoyed it either way. So there's that. I think any dog that can focus that long is very bright. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I love <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Daphne always has the, the, the Scooby snacks on hand. 
So I need to know what has been your go-to Scooby snack. <gasps> Even now you have it. <laughs> it's because of him. Um, okay. Um, Who is that? Who is that's that? That's my finny dog. That's my finny dog. He's always with me at junkets and is, is, there's, it's no different now. But um, exactly. yeah, no, I have, I have his Scooby snacks. And then were you asking me what mine is? Yeah, your go-to Scooby snack or sandwich during quarantine because I feel like we all have one right now. Uh, well, I got a bucket full of these. Cheddar bunnies. Oh. Okay. Do you feel like that is one of the best reasons to have a child is to have an excuse to have goldfish or bunnies in the house? Well, truth be told, I've been eating cheddar bunnies for many, many years. <laughs> and now I have to share them. Mm. So sad. <laughs> Um, no, I have my own stash, but yeah, no, but the, the, the kid thing is amazing because there's all these other treats I didn't even know about. I'm just right. a snack. And now you can enjoy them. Yeah. <laughs> if you could, um, if you could go anywhere in the mystery machine right now, where would it be? Oh, wow. Um, you know what? I wouldn't choose to go anywhere. I'm so blessed to be at home. Um, you know what I would do? I would send the mystery machine and pick up all of my family members around the country, my sister, especially, and her niece and my niece. And I'd bring, I'd make them, I'd bring them here. <laughs> that sounds like That's a good the hardest plan. Thing. That's the hardest thing. I I'm, ha I'm where I want to be. This is going to be um, a great opportunity for families because we're all, you know, looking for things to do together in our home that is a new activity. <laughs> so I feel like this is a godsend for a lot of families to have a family movie coming out right now. Uh, it honestly couldn't, couldn't be better. I, when, when this whole thing happened with the crisis, I was like, I hope Scoop still comes out when it's supposed to come out and they totally timed it. I mean, it's it, 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 exactly as it should be. I'm so looking forward to the world seeing it and being able to do it with their families. And in the comfort of their own home with their pets. I mean, how amazing is it to have like a premiere <laughs> with your whole family, including your, your pets that you can't bring to the theater. So it's kind of perfect. It really is the perfect family movie. And I'm so excited to see it with my daughter and Ben. Jason, hi. Hi, Kim. How's it going? Good. How are you? How's the future? You're eight hours ahead of me. Is it is the future uh, better than the present for me? It's not that different. Oh, yeah. Don't get overly <laughs> hopeful. <laughs> Friday night is looking good, I think, for, you know, the big uh, Scoob launch, Scoob movie party night, whatever it's called. But uh, beyond that, it's looking very gray. <laughs> um, I have to tell you, in honor of this interview, I very seriously considered wearing pants. Thanks. That's very, very kind of you. You will be the only one then. <laughs> I know it is so odd that tub. no matter where we are. You're in a hot tub right now? Yeah, but only below the, just out of shot. Oh, that must be so comfortable. I am envious, to be honest. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, hot tub sales, I know you've only got four minutes. Hot tub sales have been going through the roof, bizarrely, during lockdown. Look, I don't know I, who are these people who are buying hot tubs now. I think people are just looking for comfort in whatever way they can find it. And maybe for some people, that is it. Well, guess what? I know <laughs> how they can find it. They can watch Scoob with the entire <laughs> family. And I'll tell you something, I'm finding it very hard to watch anything with my entire family. I've got an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old and my wife, and everybody wants to watch different things. And uh, what a joy it is to find something that you can all watch together. I have to tell you, I also watched it with my entire family last night and our dog who watched nice. with great intensity. She was quite interested you know, in it. I didn't about. think of bringing the dog in and we might have to have a second screening. <laughs> okay. So for someone who has played one of the great villains of all times with one of the great names of all times, right. Lucius Malfoy, then you're offered a villain named Dick Dastardly. Which is name now is your favorite time. name? He is Dick Dastardly? Yeah, yeah. Of course. I grew up watching Dick Dastardly. I grew up watching The Wacky Races and, uh, and Scooby-Doo, of course, and, uh, and The Banana Splits, oddly, which were all bundled together on Saturday morning for British TV. And, uh, and I love Dick Dastardly. What I thought was brilliant, how they reinvented and updated the entire thing. I mean, this being an origin story for Scoob and Shaggy, but also very much part of the 21st century with Simon Cowell. Spoiler. Uh, and various other <laughs> things in it. But Dick himself, who is such a tragic and pathetic loser, let's face it, uh, was updated to be far more, he's got a massive pair of shoulders on him, which for a puny lad like me was a joy to be. But also he's just, 
there's something a little bit more scary and solid about him because you're meant to be alarmed by his presence. But in the end, he's the same craven fool he always was. <laughs> well, he is described as being, I believe, six foot five and 295 pounds. So what kind of workout regimen did you need to take on Type prior cast. to this role? Well, that's one of the great joys about animation. <laughs> you can play anything at all and you don't have to look like it. Uh, plus, you can get out <laughs> of bed very late in the morning. And then when you do publicity, you can do it in your bedroom, in your swimming trunks. <laughs> He has, he sports a very impressive mustache too. I'm wondering if you have tried any new facial hair situations given uh, our quarantine situation. Kim, I shaved just for you. <gasps> That's partly why my children and my wife have done my makeup and I look slightly like an embalmed corpse because underneath <laughs> it, there's quite a lot of cuts going on and some big red blotchy stuff. Uh, and when this publicity for Scoob is over, uh, I will go back to my grizzly man look. <laughs> well, I can support that. I hope that you are staying well. I know things are as crazy across the pond as they are here. So it's not well. going Thank great you so in much Britain. for your time. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's nice to be able to put something positive in the world that can bring some joy to families because it's a tough time for everyone.